What is up everybody? So check it out. I'm pretty excited about this video because it's actually in my area of study. Now, in 2020, the United States military just received a bipartisan bill to increase the military spending to $738 billion. For perspective, in 2019 under Obama, the military budget was $600 billion. So let me kind of rattle off some things that the budget will be paying for. Number one, 80 bases across the world. That's pretty bad. Number two, wars in both the Middle East and Africa. I just created a video that's coming out pretty soon about the war in Afghanistan and how something through the Afghanistan papers, it proved that there was no goal in the war in Afghanistan. The United States military literally manipulated statistics. We bribed Afghani officials, which led to nothing. And instead, we could have been spending that money on something a little bit more useful like, you know, healthcare, college education or trade school equivalent, more veterans assistance, those sorts of things. But that is what this bill is going to be going towards. Now let's break this down a little bit more so. Originally in 2018, the United States Senate, which by the way, this was backed by Elizabeth Warren, they're originally going to create a $716 billion bill. So $22 billion less than what we currently have. After that bill passed, they decided to jump it up even more, which is where we have the additional $22 billion, making it a total of $738 billion. This was backed by Trump. This was backed by Biden and Nancy Pelosi, who is the Speaker of the House, AKA one of the most influential people inside the US political system right now. For perspective, in 2001, the budget was only $456 billion. That's quite a bit of a jump. Keep in mind, this isn't keeping the troops safe. This is putting them into more wars overseas that we don't need to go into. Right now, the US military is taking up 67% of US discretionary spending. Discretionary spending is essentially where there's a certain amount of spending that the United States has that we can cut from. And so this is one of those programs, which is excessive military spending. So pretty much everything that isn't actually mandatory for the federal government to pay for. Also in 2018, as a little perspective check, according to International Institute for Strategic Studies, the United States military is bigger than the next 10 countries combined, most of which are our actual allies. So let me rattle off a couple of the countries just so you have a little bit more perspective on the situation. All right, first country, Brazil, okay. South Korea, ally. Germany, ally. Japan, ally. France, ally. United Kingdom, ally. India, ally. Russia, eh. Saudi Arabia, ally. In China, meh. That's how big our budget is. Here's the kicker. If we literally cut our military spending in half, we would still outspend China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran combined. Oh, Jesus, that's crazy. So let's add another layer on top of everything that we're already talking about. Now in 2017, the Pentagon estimated that they had lost $125 billion on waste and abuse through what they call overhead spending. Overhead spending is where you spend an additional amount after you already spent your entire budget. 2017, they had a budget of $700 billion. This means that they had lost an additional $125 billion on top of their $700 billion. Let's think for a second, do a little brain exercise about what that would be like. So imagine you were buying a Lamborghini for, I don't know how much this stuff costs, let's say $200,000. Say you bought it sticker price because you're stupid. $200,000. Imagine signing the agreement and then afterwards they said, hey, actually, I know you just signed for $200,000, but we're going to need 22%. So that is $44,000 extra. So we actually need you to pay $244,000 extra. That's pretty bad. The rhetorical question that I would now have to ask you guys is why would the Trump administration support this? Why would any president support this? Not just Trump, but like why would the most current up-to-date president be supporting this stuff? Well, with Trump specifically, let's just rattle off like two reasons why. Number one, the Secretary of Education. He is the one that gave Betsy DeVos, the Secretary of Education, her job, which by the way, she has no background in education administration and yet she's the Secretary of Education. I wonder why. Well, maybe because of the fact that her brother, Eric Prince, is literally the CEO of Blackwater, which is the contracting company, the military contracting company. This individual is literally worth $2.4 billion. 
that is her brother and she is in the Trump administrative team. What that means is that there's more of a business inside of the war and politics, inside the military industrial complex. It's becoming more of a business. Would you like some proof with that? It turns out that in 2017, there were 25,000 contractors in Afghanistan. There was only 8,500 military personnel from the United States. Only 8,500 military personnel yet there was 25,000 contractors? What? How does that work? It doesn't because it's a business. That means that we're there for profiting interests, not for the interests of the people or for the Americans that are risking their lives. Now, when I talk about contractors, I'm talking about the CEOs and I'm talking about the lobbyists. I'm not talking about the contractors that are actually risking their lives on the ground. I'm showing that there's a fundamental problem with this as a result of the military industrial complex, which brings me to number two the reason why Trump might support this, which is the military industrial complex. When we're talking about the military industrial complex, it's easier to kind of think about this if we were to break it up in three different categories. So you have the defense contractors, you have the Pentagon, and you have administration and Congress. Well, it turns out that in 2017, for example, contractors spent $127.4 million on lobbying. That went all the way to administration and Congress. Now, that is where you get your $138 billion in additional military spending. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a second, then how exactly are they able to justify doing that spending? Well, that's where the Pentagon comes in handy. 80% of top Pentagon officials have worked for the contracting defense industry. Now, we don't know exactly how many will end up back into the defense industry, but we know it's at least a fraction. So, the point here, is that is exactly how the system works. Trump, being the most recent president, is fitting well, well, really well within that system, which is why we're getting the budget increase. This is a problem. If we're supporting the troops, we are going to be more careful about what it is that we're sending them into, not sending them into an 18-year-long war in Afghanistan, which we shouldn't be in. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. If you guys would like to reach out to me, Twitter is at ZachMoss6. Um, we got Facebook at ZachMoss6. Instagram is, what is my Instagram?